Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're on to method three called the superposition method. What we do there is we remove each source one at a time and then solve the circuit with that source removed. Now, not exactly removed. When we have a voltage source and we want to get rid of the voltage source, we simply set the voltage equal to zero, as we did over here. If we remove a current source, we, phys we physically take the current source out and replace it by an open. And then we solve the current through this branch in each case, then we add them together, and that should then give us the resulting current we're looking for. Let's say in this case we're only looking for I2 to make it a little bit simpler. And so I2 then will be equal to the current I1 minus the current IB because we have the, the arrow IB in the opposite direction. Since this is the positive end of the voltage source, we assume that IB will be in this direction in that particular circuit. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for IA first. So what we have here is we have a single current source and we have a branch point. So some of the current will flow here and some of the current will flow here. So we basically have a current divider, which means that IA is equal to the current from the source, so let's call this a source current, I sub s. So that's equal to the source current, I sub s, times the impedance in the other branch, which would be J8, divided by the sum of the impedances of the two branches. So in this case, that would be J8 minus J4 and plus 3. So that will give us I sub a. So go ahead and figure that out. I sub A is equal to the source current, which is 5 amps with a phase angle of 10 degrees, times, in the numerator, we're going to convert that to magnitude and phase angle, so it would be 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. In the denominator, we end up with uh, 3 plus J4, which is equal to 5 with a phase angle of 10 degrees, and then that would give us an 8 with a phase angle of 90 degrees and divided by 5 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And now we're ready to go ahead and work that out. So 5 and 5 cancel out. Well, actually, that's pretty straightforward. And that gives us, um, this is equal to 8 with a phase angle of 10 plus 90, that's 100 minus 53.13, that would be 46.87 degrees. So that's the current IA. So now we need to find current IB, and there we simply have a single loop. We have a voltage source, so there we can say that I sub B is equal to the voltage divided by the current. In this case, um, oh, voltage divided by impedance, sorry. Voltage divided by impedance. And uh, let's see here, that gives us 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by the total impedance, so we add all everything up, so it gives us 3 minus J4 plus J8. So this is equal to 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by, this will give us 3 uh, plus J4, which is 10 with a phase angle of minus 60 degrees divided by 5 with a phase angle of 53.13 degrees. And so I sub E is equal to 10 divided by 5, which is 2, with a phase angle of minus 113.13 degrees. All right, so now we need to find I sub 2. I sub 2 is equal to IA minus IB which is equal to IA, which is uh, 8, with a phase angle of 46.87 degrees, minus IB, which is 2, with a phase angle of minus 113.13 degrees. And we get rid of the minus here by adding 180 degrees to that. So that would be equal to 8, with a phase angle of 46.87 degrees, plus 2 with a phase angle of 180, that would be 66.66.87 uh, degrees. Add that to 113, that's 170, yep, that looks about right. 
But now, before we can add it, we have to convert that to real and imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and do that. Where's my calculator? All right. 46.87, take the cosine of that, times 8 equals. So 5.47 plus j, 46.87, take the sine of that, times 8. That gives us 5.84 plus 66.87, take the cosine of that, times 2, gives us 0 0.79 plus j. That's 66.87, take the sine of that, times 2 equals 1.84, which is equal to, when we add those together, so 0 0.8, that would be 6.26, 6 6.26 plus j, 5.84, that would be 6, that would be 7.6, 7.68, 7 7.68, 8, 6, 1, that's 7, and here we get uh, 618216, all right? And now we want to convert that back to magnitude and uh, phase angle. So 6.26 squared plus 7.68 squared equals, take the square root. That gives us 9.90, 9.90 with a phase angle of 7.68 divided by 6.26. Take the inverse tangent, 50.82 degrees, 50.82 degrees, and of course, that's amps, and this would be I2, and looks like, again, very close to what we got on the previous two videos for the current I2. So, actually, I like this method because it makes the mathematics or the arithmetic just a little bit easier. But here you go, there's the third method, superposition on the very same circuit. And hopefully, we'll continue getting the right answers on the next three examples on the next three methods. So stay tuned and you'll see how to use the additional methods to solve a circuit like this.